surfers are hardcore in Britain and always have been. I can't believe now how we managed to go in the sea in January and February with those really useless wetsuits that we used to have. We used to wear woolly jumpers under them. My God, it was freezing. Since the dawn of surfing on British shores, the natives have faced one obstacle above all others, the bloody cold. To really rule the chilly waves, they would need to get creative, industrious, if you will. Cue dashingly moustachioed Dennis Cross, a waterman with an unyielding desire to tame the icy British waves. Dennis is probably one of the unsung heroes of the British surf scene. Dennis was a pioneer. I had no visions at all of ever doing it commercially. It was purely self-interest, and it sort of worked. It was wonderful. <laughs> Armed with a roll of neoprene, a pair of scissors, and some 1960s sticky tape, Dennis fashioned his first wetsuits. Taking to the waves, he quickly caught the attention of his fellow surfers. The orders rolled in, the evolution began, and Gull was born. It came on in leaps and bounds through the 70s, and then Dennis started making these one-piece suits, and things really changed when the one-piece suit came along. The one-piece suit, or the steamer as we called it, it was quite unique to surfing. It was the forerunner to the modern day suit that we're all using now. Never once to rest on their laurels, the Gull team set out to push boundaries, making increasingly elaborate and neon-laden wetsuits. Well, I suppose you always think, what can we do to make this any better, you know? We even did one that you could inflate blow into it, you know, people would blow it up. Like they had like a little Michelin man in the water there. He didn't do very much, really, but it's just an idea. In the end, we came back to the fact that what we were doing worked perfectly well. With the surfing wetsuit conquered, Gull were on the hunt for their next big challenge. And it arrived in the form of windsurfing. Windsurfing really hit in the very late 70s, early 80s in the UK. Then it just exploded. Windsurfing was one of those sports that had a craze element about it. Everybody wanted a windsurfer, you know, and the sport developed very, very quickly. Anybody who was looking for something that was going to be exciting that they could do on the water, they chose windsurfing. When I very first started, wetsuits were pretty bad. It was a massive game changer when basically Gull would come along and say, right, we've got surfing style suits that we can make for windsurfing. They actually thought about what a windsurfer needs. So they were part of the DNA really as it grew. Nobody else at the time was doing it. So we had two different types of suit. We had a windsurfing and a surfing suit. We didn't make much else to be honest with you. <laughs> that was it. As the 90s and noughties rolled in, Gull continued to stoke their ingrained flair for technical innovation, water sports, and keeping folks warm. There was a, a, suddenly a range now. There wasn't just a wetsuit. There was clearly an evolution towards more of a sailing-based wetsuit. We were the best in the world. Our most successful Olympics was 2008, and that's in no small part due to the fact that everyone was wearing Gull kit. For 50 years, Gull have led the way in British wetsuit innovation, revolutionising sport after sport. And it all stems back to one waterman who invented the first British surfing wetsuit and opened up our frigid waters for generations to come. Here's to you, Dennis.